So let me carrying on where we left off. What I'm going to be doing now is walking through a bunch of different situations, and I'm just going to show, Sarah, how I would approach them. I'm not going to solve them. Here's the first one. A rocket at rest. I would probably underline the word at rest. What's my initial kinetic energy if I'm at rest? Okay. Uh, blasts off from rest and rises to a maximum altitude or height. If I give you the altitude, make sure you add the radius of the planet. If I give you the height, make sure you add the radius of the planet. If I give you the radius, you don't need to worry about that. <coughs> to a maximum distance, big R. Write equations to calculate the work done by the engine. Okay. Paige, what does this want me to write down? What does it want me to find? The what? Work, work you say. So work... Let's not use red, Mr. Duke. Work is going to be change in potential plus change in kinetic. But it looks like, Paige, we started at rest, and it looks like we burned all our fuel, and so we're going to be coming to a stop, slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, and at the top for a split second, we'll be at rest. Really, it's the same physics as that right there, throwing the ball into the air. You okay with that? So I can cross out the change in kinetic energy. Page, what's change in anything? So this is going to be negative big G, big M, little m over. And I guess R final is capital R minus negative big G, big M, little m all over. R initial would be little r. Now, the other thing I could do, instead of giving you big R, instead of giving you capital R, I could, you should just make a little note here. Capital R is little r plus h plus the height or the altitude. So I got a few options. Linnea, as far as I'm concerned, I could give you both of the R's and say, please tell me how much work. Or, Ira, I could actually uh, tell you how much work, how much energy we had, and say, how high did we get? Find big R. Actually, that would be how far we got from the center of the planet. If I wanted to make it one step harder, then I would say, how high did we get? And you'd have to subtract little r to get the height. Okay. For all of these, this was the equations where it was difficult enough where I stopped choosing to get the r by itself. In other words, if I asked you to find big R, if I asked you to find that, I would move this to that side. I would get an answer. I wouldn't try and get big R by itself. I'd get a number. Then I would times by R and divide the number over, and we're good to go. I wrote here, this is how much work required just to lift something into space. Why won't this keep it on a stable orbit? Why do you have to have Ke to stay in a stable orbit? Because... Otherwise, because you, you, you are in free fall, what we do is we give you enough kinetic energy to give you just the right orbital speed so that you're moving tangent to the radius, and even though you're in free fall, you're never getting any closer to the Earth. Okay? Uh, another thing I could do, uh, a rocket moving at speed V at liftoff near the Earth's surface rises to a height H with no engine use. Write an equation to calculate the maximum height using conservation of energy. Let's assume... The rocket ends at rest, but it doesn't start at rest. Now, I probably wouldn't phrase it this blatantly in a question, but this is another situation. We would say things like, Zach, is there a change in height? Is there a change in speed? Is there, is there a yucky, curvy force? That tells me it's a job for conservation of energy. Specifically, Paige, if they didn't ask me how much work, I would not start out by writing down work. I'd probably start out by writing down conservation of energy. Zach, are we in orbit? No. Okay, so I would start like this. Kinetic initial plus potential initial equals kinetic final plus potential final. Zach, are any of these zeros? Kinetic final, I agree with. Are we out at the edge of the universe at infinity? Are we out at the edge of the universe at infinity? Say no. So is the potential energy ever zero? If we were using MGH, it would be, but are we going cosmic? Yeah! And so we would end up with this. A half M V initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over R 
initial, which usually if we're coming, starting from a planet is the radius of the planet. I, I guess I could start from outer space too, but why? Equals negative big G, big M, little m over. Now looking at the picture that they gave me here, is that H a radius from the center of the planet or not? So here, I would have to have little r plus h. That would give me big R, the distance from the center of the planet. In this equation, oh, Sarah, for what it's worth, the little m cancels. So I, I might give you the mass of the rocket. I might not. In this equation, I can either give you the radius of the planet where we ended up, and I could say, how fast do we need to launch at? I could tell you how fast we launched at and ask you, how high did we get? Okay. You're going to see uh, examples like all of that in the ultimate review and in your homework. So I wrote here, if I know how much kinetic energy we start with, we can calculate the maximum height, and as always, it goes backwards. If I know the maximum height, then I can figure out how much kinetic energy I started with, what was my initial speed leaving the Earth. We're always ignoring air resistance, and we're always assuming we're launching from the North Pole, from Santa Claus, or Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Uh, a rocket moving at speed V near liftoff barely escapes Earth gravity with no additional engine use. Write a conservation of energy equation that would allow us to solve for V. So one of the key things here is barely. What did we call this when you barely escape the gravity by coasting the rest of the way out to the edge of infinity? Okay, so this is what we call escape velocity. How did we do this? Does the question say how much work? Patrick, is the question asking how much work? Be obvious. Uh, no. no. So I'm going to go conservation of energy because we're not in orbit. So I'm going to go kinetic initial plus potential initial equals kinetic final plus potential final. Are any of these zero, Zach? I'll give you a hint. Where are we ending up at? Out at? Okay. At? Okay. This was kind of strange because you were like, what? Did I not use any energy up? You did. It's just going to be all of your kinetic gets turned into potential. You get this. A half m v initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over r initial equals nothing. Then what we did is we took that negative term, Sarah, and we plussed it over. This is how we derived the escape velocity equation. We ended up with a half m v initial squared equals positive big G, big M, little m over r initial. We once again noticed that. So what could I give you here? Uh, certainly, I could give you the mass of the planet, the radius of the planet, Say, find me the escape velocity. I could also tell you the escape velocity and the radius of the planet and say, what's the mass of the planet? Believe it or not, that's what we use to actually calculate masses of black holes uh, because we know that the escape velocity for a black hole is the speed of light. So we look at where that event horizon is through our telescopes. And we can use it to figure out the mass of the black hole because we know the radius of the distance from the center. A rocket at rest on the Earth, blasts off and and, not and, and enters a ooh, 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 stable orbit. How much work will the engines do? Sarah, what's this question asking me to find? So I'm going to go like this. Work equals change in potential plus change in kinetic. Does the change in kinetic get crossed out this time? Because it got crossed out way back here in example A. Does the change in kinetic get crossed out if we're in orbit? No, we can't, okay? So this part here, the change in potential, would be the same as part A. We would have to walk through that. And then the change in kinetic would be, what's changed in anything? 
and it does say we can assume that we begun at rest. The only thing I'll make a note here is I might give you the orbital speed. If I did not, let's make a little note to find orbital speed. Gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. So to find V orb, which is V final, use that. I think we ended up with V orb being the square root of big G, big M over R. I don't know. I'd rederive it. This is the question that is a lot of work. It's about 10 lines. There absolutely will be one of these on your test. On your test, I'm going to ask you to calculate how much work to go in orbit. I might be nice and give you the speed in the question, or I might make you calculate the speed. I'm flip-flopping. It's, it's Honestly, I've, I'm going to create the tests. I'm going to write them myself and time myself. To shorten it, I may end up giving you the speed, but be prepared to have to find the speed if it's a short, shorter test. We can also do crashes, asteroid impacts. Satellite moving at speed V at a distance R from the Earth's center falls to the Earth's surface. How fast will it hit the Earth? Kieran, what's this question asking me to find? Did it say how much work? No. Is there going to be a change in height and a change in speed and a yucky curvy force? What would I use here? Are we, are, by the way, are we in orbit? Are we crashing into the Earth? So are we in a nice stable orbit? No. So don't do, don't do gravity that's pulling me in a circle. See all the little hints we can get? So we would start out going KE initial plus PE initial equals KE final plus PE final. Kieran, are we starting out at rest? No. I might give you this and say start out at rest just to make the math nice. There is going to be some kind of an asteroid potential energy change in question like this. So here we end up with a half m v initial squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over r initial. That equals a half m v final squared plus negative big G, big M, little m over r final. The little m's cancel again. And Kieran, as far as I'm concerned then, there are three main variables here. V initial, R initial, V final. Probably wouldn't ask you to find R final. That's going to be the planet. And if it's the Earth, you already know that. Or I'd, I'd give you that. So as far as I'm concerned, if you want to, you can put a little arrow pointing there and there and there. I can give you any two of those and say find the third one. I would not try and get the letters by themselves right away. What I would do is whatever term contains what I'm trying to find, I would get it by itself, move everything else over, crunch all those things, get a single number, then I would get the letter by itself. Does that make sense, Tato? Okay. There's going to be something like that on your homework if you're not sure. This last one? A satellite in orbit around a planet has a gravitational potential energy of that. Its orbital radius is that. Okay. Huh. Huh. Josh, what's A wanting me to find? The mass of the planet. <sighs> okay. Now we are in orbit. We are in orbit. So in my back pocket, I have gravity is what's pulling me in a circle. So I'm going to write that down first. Don't write this down yet. I'm not sure if it's even going to be useful. But in this case, I'm, by the way, mass of the planet, I'm trying to find big M, which shows up in many of our equations. So the first thing I might try doing is going big G, big M, little m over R squared equals M. And then I would ask, which version of A do I want to use here? Did they give me the speed or did they give me the period? It's a trick question. Did they give me the speed or did they give me the period? None. And then I would say, I guess I'm not going to tackle this using gravity. That, that would be my mental process. That's why I said don't write that down. 
What else did they give me? Potential energy. Let's try writing that down. This you can write down, Linnea. Potential energy equals negative big G, big M, little m over R. Josh, do I know the potential energy? Say yes. yes. Big G, 6.67 times 10 to 11. Do I know little m? Yeah. Ah, 965. Do I know R? Yeah. Oh, okay. I can use this to get big M. How would I get big M by itself? Uh, times, the R. times the R and then divide by... Sure, I've never used this one before, but I can derive this. So I think big M is going to be R times the potential energy divided by negative big G little m. Might be able to fit this. You know what? That little m looks like a big M. Let's make sure I under... There we go. Uh, I think I fit this on one line. 8.85 times 10 to the 6. Uh, negative 6.55 times 10 to the 10th. Negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. 965. Okay. Josh, is it a negative divided by a negative? Yeah. Is the answer going to be positive? Should a mass be positive? You know what? I'm good with that. In fact, I'm so lazy, I probably won't even bother typing the negatives because I know the answer is positive. But I am going to go to my calculator for this. Eight point eight five scientific notation six times negative six point five five scientific notation ten. Oh, I did type the negative divided by. Negative 6.67, scientific notation, negative 11, times 965. I'm hoping I get something in like the 10 to the 22, 23, 24, 25. Like most of our planet masses have been in the 10 to the 20 or 10 to the 30. I think the sun is 10 to the 30. So I'm hoping I get something in the 10 to the 20s, I think. Do I? Did you get, wow, almost exactly 9 times 10 to the 24th? Yes? Is that what Mr. Duick started with when he reverse engineered this question? Probably. Okay. Linnea, did you get that okay? Because you're practicing typing this into your calculator because it's not like you ever had trouble typing this into your calculator. You got it okay, right? Yeah. <laughs> Times 10 to the 24th. I think it would be... Um, what's the mass of the Earth? 5. Point, isn't it 5.98 times oh, 10? Yeah, right. You know what? Mass of the Earth is almost exactly 6 times 10 to the 24th. This is about one-third as massive extra as the Earth. So this would be a rough, we would call this a roughly Earth-sized planet, roughly. Okay? Uh, its orbital radius is, it's, sorry, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, uh, well, this is the orbital radius. I don't know the radius of the planet. Okay. Well, Bean, what's B want me to find? Speed. Speed. How am I going to do that one? Any thoughts, folks? I, I think I might try gravity as what's pulling me in a circle, and now I'll bring in the V. And if that doesn't work, maybe I can do something with energies, kinetic and potential, but I would start there because we're in orbit. So gravity, big G, big M, little m, over r squared is what's pulling me in uh and I think Mobin, you agree with me, v squared over r sounds like my bet there. Oh, don't cross that out, Mr. Duke. Cross out one of the r's and cross out an m. We've seen this equation a bunch of times. I think we find that v equals the square root of big G, big M over r. Now I'm going to be using big M, the planet. So it's going to be the square root of negative 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, 9.01 times 10 to the 24th, divided by 8.85 times 10 to the 6th. You know what, Mr. Duick, since you're moving down one line anyways, why don't you just give yourself more room? 
Did I make a mistake? Am I wrong, Chang? Oh, why is it negative? I don't know. Because I'm tired. Stayed up to watch the hockey game and I didn't get my beauty sleep. Is that okay? Let's try that then. Linnea, what's the answer? Good. Try it, please. Because we're not going to go until you get the answer. Good. Do this one too. Congratulations for meeting the minimum expectation I have for every one of my students. I'm so proud of you. No, don't put a negative in there. There you go. What'd you get? Did you square root? You get 8,240? Is that seem about right? Most of our speeds have been there. By the way, on your test, I am going to give you one black hole question, and we'll look at that either later on today or next class. Those numbers will not be numbers that we're used to. They're going to be off the charts crazy, but I'll give you hints in the test. Uh, 8,240 meters per second. Stephen, what's C want me to find? What did I just find in B? Oh, you know what? I bet you I'm going to use that speed. I think it's just going to be straight plug and chug. What's kinetic energy been since the beginning of this year, my friend? What's the equation? No, no, what's kinetic energy? It's on your formula sheet, which you have out in front of you, right? A half mv squared? Good. And this is the kinetic energy in orbit. Uh, it's going to be... A half, what was M? I scrolled down. Thank you, Stephen. And I'm going to write 8240, Stephen, but you know I'm going to use my answer button, yes? A half times 965 times answer button squared. And I get this. You get uh, 3.276 times 10 to the 10th. I'll give it to three sig figs, 3.28 times 10 to the 10th joules. There's my final answer, but just in case I'm going to use this, let's carry a few extra sig figs. 3.276 times 10 to the 10th joules. And what's the last thing they want me to find? How do I find total energy in orbit? What does the word total suggest I should do? Add. What energy do I have in orbit? Potential and kinetic. Did they tell me the potential energy in orbit already? Say yes. Oh, so this actually, your eyes looked really wide. Is that, this is actually going to be easy. It's going to be potential energy in orbit plus the kinetic energy in orbit. And conveniently, I have the kinetic energy stored on my calculator. Plus, what was the potential energy? I scrolled down. Can you read it to me, kiddo? And do you get, as your answer, negative but the same number as the kinetic energy? This is what we said way back when, at the end of the last lesson. We said, for what it's worth, if you're in orbit, if you happen to notice that the total energy is half the potential, which it is, and if you happen to notice that the total energy and the kinetic energy are the same numbers, but one's negative and one's positive, then you've probably done it right. Now, we've rounded off a little bit, so we might not be bang accurate all the way there. Oop, went too far. Let's see, what did I get? Three point, I got negative 3.2735. It would have been lovely if I'd gotten negative 3.27646. And if I had 
carried all my answers all the way through, but that potential energy that I gave you at the beginning, I had to round that one off. So we're accurate, the rule that I showed you, the little pattern, it's good to about three or four sig figs, and it would be good to more if I hadn't rounded off. So negative 3.27. What's your homework? Lots. I need you to get good at doing this, and this is lots of typing. I need you to get error-free on your calculators, and the only way I know how to do that is to throw lots of practice at you. So one, two, three, four. You can skip five, six, seven. Eight. You can skip 9. 10, 11. You can skip 12 and 13. 14. You can skip 15. 16. You can skip 17. 18 and 19. We're not done. 